wish I could do that. Yeah, but you don't need to, man, because when you hear it, you get in that zone, right? So you hear chords like this. Someone brings them to you. And then you get into a place like for tonight where the words come and the emotion and the feeling starts to present itself to you. Can you try to describe that? My process is, I really think the story is the most important part. Simply because I think that's what's going to make someone go back to it. That's definitely what's going to make me play it over and over again. So I like to have the story first. You have this inbuilt maturity in terms of how you want to manage your journey. A lot of us, when we get a taste of something, to your point, want more of that straight away. And we're very quick to tell people, I've been doing this. <laughs> Whereas you're out here going, <laughs> that can wait, and I'm brand new. Right. Like, just, just be patient. I mean, I think a huge part of that is music education and music history. Which you was given by your mother exactly she put me in this program with the um the grammys the grammy academy in la they take inner city kids they teach you music history they teach you songwriting they teach you all of this so while all of my peers were studying the current rotation the internet, of artists the internet. the internet i'm i have assignments to study 60s swing jazz with Nat King Cole, Frank Sinatra. You're being introduced to craft. Exactly. So, and I'm learning how it takes a, it takes time to get to that point. And also artist development, which is like almost, those words are almost extinct. It's a forgotten art. It's a forgotten art. And that's the main part. So here's a really inspiring lesson I think people can take from your process. If you can't take your time, you took your time. You know, if you want to let me take my time, I'm going to take my time. Mm. Yeah, literally, that's what I did. Because while this is happening, I'm still new. And almost every week, where's the new music? Where's the new music? So being bombarded with that as a new artist. It's anxiety inducing. Inducing. And it's, it's, it takes a certain amount of bravery and confidence to know that Whenever I release this body of work, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fine. It's so fascinating already, dude, because <clears throat> you are somebody who has um, established principles for yourself and a framework within which you are disciplined enough to remain. I think a huge part of that is I did all the steps. I did the shows in Long Beach, California with 15, 20 people. I released the song or two on SoundCloud that got 30 streams. And I've slept on couches. So I don't really have the fear of losing it all or like rushing. Because you've tested your resolve. I tested it already. And I'm not, once I've seen people connect with the music that I'm making, knowing that I didn't conform at all. I have this voice that, you know, and I'm singing about, whatever it is I'm singing about and people are still re receiving it. So I'm like, oh, I could, I could just do my thing. You know, for your mother to be able to recognize your talent and to be able to nurture you into a place where you got grounding from which you can remain grounded is a rare quality. Do you think she recognized your talent before you did or did she follow your lead? She recognized it first. So she would just play music around the house while she cleaned. And she she was one of those people who once she likes something or a song, she's going to play it over and over. So she's a music fan. Music fan. So if you're in the vicinity, you're going to learn that song against your will. So then I, I would just start to sing along because it's just in my head at this What's, point. What song right now, and please continue your thought, but just as a quick circuit breaker, what song immediately springs to mind right now? Uh, Denise Williams, Silly of Me. Wow. I could, I could just hear it. I could smell the pine saw, the bleach while she's cleaning and just in uh, Denise Williams free. But I would start to like sing along and then the next family birthday, she'll have me singing happy birthday to like an uncle, auntie, cousin. Did it feel natural to you in those moments or were you trying to make your mom happy? First couple, I was just like, I was just trying to make her happy because I didn't hear it. 
And then seeing people's reception, uh, reception of me was like, it's like looking glass self. I was a class clown just for, I think that was really for attention. So once I realized I had this voice, I started cra cracking less jokes. When we were going to have this conversation, I was, I was excited, man. Like I was like border on, bordering on nervous, you know, like mm. I had anticipation because you haven't done this. And yet the music that I heard on your album, when I listened to it and what I've heard you do thus far, I feel like I've known you for 20 years. So it's like, wow. a, it was a strange combination I of never thought factors. of it like that. You know, I didn't feel, you don't feel like a new artist to me. So I'm so glad that you think of yourself as one. Cause it doesn't feel like one to me at all. Like I was there in the crowd, Coachella, bro. You, you watched it? Yeah, man. It was epic. Oh, wait, which weekend? First weekend. Oh, okay. That was not, that, I like that one. You came out, man. And your understanding of pace was everything. You know how hard it is to go out on stage that big in front of that many people on a weekend like that, having not done that before and not just do it 3X in pace, 3X in energy and just, man, I don't even know how you did it. That's an actual question, on. How did you do that? Your hands were steady, dude. You know what it is? And people probably won't believe me. I watch a lot of stand-up comedy. Dave Chappelle. Uh, Kevin Hart, and the and just public speaking, like if uh, Obama speech, Dave Chappelle's pace. Ignore that he's he's telling jokes. His pace and his delivery and confidence is second to none. Obviously, besides like I watch a lot of I just watch a lot of live things. Luther Vandross, Teddy Pendergrass. People who understand the, the, the importance of space. Because what space allows an audience to do is to invest. Yeah, the space is so important. But even just like watching Teddy and Frank Sinatra, when you, when you don't have the dancers or when you don't have the 20-piece orchestra going on behind you, it's all up to you. And... I realized the importance of just trying to connect with each person. Because also a thing I was con not concerned but curious about was what if no one knows? Who, like, I, I, I kind of try to approach every festival like not a single person knows who I am. I think when you get to a place where the foundation of self-belief that meets the foundation of believing in others, which is where real relationships exist. I have enough self-awareness and belief to be able to be at my best and share my worst. And I trust you to do the same. When that gets broken, you lose a little bit of that innocence that your parents try to instill in you, you know, that your mother tried to tell you, hey, and you've turned that into a record. Like that's what the album is to me is it's like, I know who I am, but I don't know if we're matching anymore. A hundred percent. And I love that you keep um, really just bringing it back to me and my mom's conversation because that's, that's the reason I, to I chose no features because th this story is so personal that there can't be another voice besides me and my mom because that's the, that's the conversation that was had. Yeah, look, it's the first time we've heard from you telling a story and so the person who helped you write it needs to be your collaborator on this. I get it. Yeah. Where and when and and what was it like to play this album to your mom? And I can imagine you didn't play a works in progress to the degree. I can imagine you sort of made a moment out of it. Yeah, definitely made a moment out of it. And it was also... Too personal? You don't have to share that. No, no. She made sure that I, I made it a moment because she'll be like, you know, just mom stuff. Oh, yeah, I made this today. She'd be like, I want to hear it all once it's done. Man, fantastic. Because she understands that I'm a project artist. She understands that every every song is connected. Every interlude is connected. Every All the sonics are connected. So then once I played it for her, obviously she started crying. Whereabouts were you? What was the environment? I was at home. And um, I, I like to just like have my family over. Like I try to do it like once a week but if if busy probably like once every two weeks and all my family was there and i was just like i played it for him and i was just like wow you'll never forget that no ever 
Never. I can't. So are you prepared for criticism if and when it comes? Oh, yeah, always. But I think I'm in a space where it's like, as far as criticism, I don't know. The, the, the world is interesting now because me personally, it's like if I'm shopping for clothing, if I don't like this shirt, I don't like the tailor in the cut, I'm not going to hold it up and be like, hey, everyone in the store, I don't like this shirt. If you, if you were wondering, I'm just not going to pick the shirt up. I'm going to go to a shirt that I like, buy it and wear it. But now people are picking up the pants they don't like, telling everyone in the store they don't like these pants. And I'm just like, I don't understand it. So as far as like criticism, I'm just like, I'm, it's art as well. It's like, if I'm telling you a story about my heartbreak, it's at my discretion. You can't say, ah, uh, tell me how you got your heart broken in another way. It's like, no, like, just go listen to something else. So it's not, I don't even think anything would be bad necessarily. It's just either it's for you or it's not. 